Okay, the truth is we don't like to look at the cross. Its physical brutality is exceeded perhaps only by the crushing emotions it evokes. But we know we need Friday. We need the cross. We, we believe that no amount of right belief, pure morality, airtight ethics, generous philanthropy, correct doctrine, careful ritual, or anything else we can say or do or believe can qualify us for citizenship in the kingdom of God. So despite its violence, we embrace, we even celebrate Friday. We even call it Good Friday. And God, how we need Sunday. The day the stone rolled away, the day death got a taste of its own medicine. Jesus lay lifeless in the tomb and suddenly air filled his lungs, his heart thumped to life, ashen skin turned blue then pink, lusterless eyes sparkled bright with life, and he sat up, then stood, then walked out of that infernal tomb alive. God knows we need Sunday. But what about Saturday, the day between death and resurrection? I mean, traditionally, we haven't given Saturday much thought. We, we live on the bright side of Easter Sunday. We, we know how that story ends. It's, it's like re-watching a football game you've already seen. Your team can be behind in the third quarter, but you're not anxious because you know how the fourth quarter turns out. That's the way the day of the tomb is for us. But let's be clear. We need what Saturday can give us because that's how someone you know may be feeling these days, like they are enduring or entering their own Saturday tomb. Maybe it's a, a dreaded diagnosis, a chronic illness no doctor has been able to relieve. Someone you know is lost in dementia or caring for someone who is. A friend moved out of the house he shared with his wife and kids into a one-bedroom apartment. Or someone you care about is trapped by an addiction they cannot shake. Or maybe you're thinking about your own Saturday tomb. You've been on your face before God and prayed as passionately as you know how. You have begged God to roll the stone away, but it hasn't budged an inch. Jesus was in his tomb three days. And right now it feels like you'll be sitting in yours a lot longer than that. Your day in the tomb feels, well, it feels final which is exactly how it felt for those first followers of Jesus. They had watched from the front row as their friend and Messiah died. They, they didn't know what we know. They did not know that the stone would roll, that the body would breathe, that death would die. For them, Saturday was locked in stone. The tomb was eternal. Wouldn't you love to go back in time and preach to Peter and testify to Thomas? It's going to be okay. Saturday won't last forever. Sunday's coming. He's going to rise from the dead. I wonder if that's pretty much what Jesus wants to say to you and me when we feel like our tombs are eternal. If you're like me, you probably didn't sign up for sitting in a tomb. But so much of life consists in just that, waiting for God to do something big, waiting for God to to do Sunday. A.J. Swoboda is a pastor in Portland, Oregon. He writes about that awful waiting. Faith, he says, isn't just Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Faith is awkward Saturday too. So much of life is sitting in that tomb with the soon-to-be resurrected Lord. It's so dark, so damp, so scary. The silence is deafening. But there is hope in there, he writes. In the tomb, the darkness is thick. But that's where God is. Not a sermon, just a thought.